Aye. Jujutsu Kaisen has been one of, if not the, most popular shonen to have come out over recent years. So I think it's only fair to put a spotlight on the reason for every JJK fan's pain and suffering. The mastermind behind this story. The one pulling on every reader's heartstrings whenever he pleases. The absolute menace that needs to be stopped immediately, Gege Akutami. Known for being a certified Gojo hater, putting Yuji through as much trauma as he can, and just in general, menace to the JJK community's well-being. To be honest, all you have to do is look at this man's avatar and you'll know exactly what type of menace he is. For today's video, I have gathered a good amount of reasons why this madman needs to be stopped immediately. But before we get into the heinous acts Gege has put on paper, please like this video, smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be all up to date whenever I post a new video. Also a quick spoiler warning since we will be heading into anime and manga spoilers, so you have been warned. Gojo's number one op. Gege has openly said multiple times that Gojo is his least favorite character, stating that Gojo is boring and he has no clue why the community loves him this much. As the pinnacle of strength in the verse, he is difficult to write, since the tension of any fight would be non-existent because it can end it before it even starts. But Gege, being the absolute demon that he is, found a way to not only make this goat of a character work, but us readers suffer while doing so. You see, even though Gojo is undoubtedly the strongest there ever was, he is in turn unable to protect what is most important to him. During the premature death arc, he didn't notice that Ghetto was going downhill mentally as he was struggling with his resolve as a Jujutsu sorcerer. When ultimately Ghetto made up his mind to put all monkeys six feet under, Gojo didn't know how to deal with it and it gave him somewhat of an identity crisis. Is he the strongest because he is Satoru Gojo? Or is he Satoru Gojo because he's the strongest? This indecision to act against his best friend ultimately led to the events of the JJK Zero movie, where Gojo and Ghetto had their final interaction as Gojo then has to kill off his best friend. A bit later in the Shibuya incident arc, this motif gets apparent yet again, where Gojo was absolutely smacking the disaster curses around, Kenjaku in Ghetto's body pulls up on him with the Prism Realm. And since Gojo was in such a shock with seeing his deceased best friend standing right in front of him, he gets sealed away. As yet again, even though he says he has faith in everyone, <laughs> well, without him being there, And this also marks the last time we see Gojo for about three years in the manga, only for him to get unsealed and forced to fight Sukuna, who had taken over his adopted son's body. I mean, just goddamn. The breaking of Yuji. Now, I could have used all examples in this one as their own exhibits of Gege's madness, but since they all contribute to twistedly breaking Yuji as a character, they will be included under here. So let's start off with Gege having an absolute giggle and killing off Yuji in chapter fucking 9. The rumors that went around were that if the manga hadn't been doing so well, he would have just left Yuji dead, which is insane. Luckily, the manga was doing really well, and we got Yuji back within a few chapters, but not before Yuji and Sukuna made a binding vow that would later come back to haunt him in the worst way possible. Moving on to Junpei, his introduction had us all thinking he would be part of the new cast. KK must have snuck into the animation studio and forced the animators to put Junpei in the goddamn opening, having a good time with all Jujutsu High students. Talk about a false sense of security. It was so nice seeing Yuji and Junpei bond over their love of movies. Yuji getting invited to Junpei's house by his mommy. I mean mommy. I mean mother. To then have Gege swiftly pull out the rug from underneath us when Ghetto planted one of Sukuna's fingers at the table Junpei's mother was sleeping at and having a curse kill her. To then have Mahito manipulate Junpei into taking revenge on his school where he inevitably runs into Yuji. And just... When Yuji was about to talk no Jutsu Junpei into coming to Jujutsu High with him, Mahito pulls up and fucking transfigures him, leaving Yuji to beg Sukuna for help, but the curses just take this opportunity to laugh in his face. And when Junpei dies because of the transfiguration, Yuji goes into an absolute rage, being unable to save his friend. But Gege ain't done with Yuji in the slightest. 
Later on in Shibuya, after he loses his fight against Choso, Keto's adopted girls and Jogo pull up to feed a shit ton of Sukuna's figures to Yuji. Sukuna then proceeds to go on an absolute rampage, destroying the city and killing an insane amount of people in a 200 meter radius while fighting Mahoraga. Sukuna then swords back with Yuji to mentally break him some more. And you thought that was all this chapter? Nah. Right after this, when Yuji steals his resolve to run back into the train station to fight, he runs into Mahito, killing everybody's favorite daddy, Nanami. And this is, again, all in one fucking chapter. Chill, man. But no. He ain't done yet. In the same fight against Mahito, Nobara is fighting one of Mahito's clones somewhere else, which leads her to the main body, who manages to touch her and supposedly kill her too. Look at this man's Yuji, man. KK, have some mercy on our boy. And the last event I'll be talking about in this one will be later on in the Cullen games, and things finally seem to be going to plan for RMCs. But remember the binding vow I talked about earlier with Sukuna? Well, he uses this to take over Yuji's body, stores all of his power in one finger, rips it off, and force feed it to Megami to swap and take over Megami's body. Bruh, look at his face. KK really is doing his best to make Yuji not the main character and torture him while doing so. And for this final exhibit, I'm just gonna speed run through some of the other deviously evil things KK has put the characters through. Pain and suffering. Haibara's death. My boy was so full of life and uplifting to everyone around him. His death had such a big impact on Ghetto and Nanami. Toji distancing himself and forgetting about his son after his wife died, selling him off to the Zenin clan only for him to remember Megumi in his final moments before death and telling Gojo about the Zenin deal. Speaking of Megumi, like I said, my boy was abandoned by his father after his mother died, leaving him alone with his stepsister Tsumiki. He was supposed to be sold off to the Zenin clan until he got adopted by Gojo. His stepsister went into a coma later, revealed to be Kenjaku's doing. His mentor slash stepfather got sealed. He fought his real father, unbeknownst to him, and almost died when summoning Maharaga if it wasn't for Sukuna. Then during the culling games, his sister got out of a coma, but hey, guess what? It wasn't really his sister. Only for Sukuna to use this moment of weakness to force feed him all of his power to take over his goddamn body. I mean, just look at the state of this man in the recent chapters. Jesus. We then have Meimei and her brother. This, this wasn't sad. This just scarred us for the rest of our lives. Kenjaku kills stealing our boy after he dog walked Mahito's ass with such BM. Principal Yaga's death. He got the death penalty and got killed by Principal Gokugunji after the Shibuya incident arc. I mean, just look at poor Panda. And finally, the most devious plot Gege has been building up from the start. Kenjaku being so dedicated to his plan, not only did he knock up a woman nine times only to abort the kids to make the nine death paintings, aka Choso, Eso, Kechizu, etc., but just for shits and giggles, he hopped into Kaori Itadori's body, yes, Yuji's mother, to receive backshots from his father Jin, and let's be honest, he definitely put it back in after it slipped out, creating the one and only Yuji, aka Sukuna's vessel. So yeah, mental stuff. So I think with this, I have enlightened you all of the menace that is Gege Akutami and why he needs to be stopped. In all seriousness though, Jujutsu Kaisen is one of my favorite shows running right now. Gege is really doing an amazing job and good lord, the manga is absolutely hype right now with Gojo vs Sukuna. So let me know down in the comments below, who is the worst victim of Gege's madness? And are you excited to see the Shibuya arc animated? Thank you for watching and don't forget to like the video, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be all up to date as soon as I upload a new video. And check out my other videos as well. I recently did a video on Tokyo Ghoul needing a reboot as well as a breakdown of the beauty that was Kakashi vs Obito. So give those a watch as well. And with that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.